Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to do the large rows. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it with the uh, tool or uh, you can use organza uh, inside the rows itself and on the outside. Um, this is um, Kyla's mini barrette. Well, her actual barrette. It's not a, um, a ponytail holder. But um, here I took the rows and I left the tool out of the center of the rows uh, the same way I did on this one because you uh, kind of like that um, center of the rows to be defined. So uh, you may want to um, put tool all the way or you can put tool uh, about an inch or two away from the center of the rows. I prefer to have the center well defined so I'm going to leave the tool or organza out of the center. So um, the things you're going to need to make the rows, uh, this rows, uh, is, um, well, any of the roses. If, if I'm going with a 3 inch wide piece of fabric, I should have 30 inches long. If I have 2 inches wide, I should have 20 inches. So whatever the width of your fabric is, just add a zero to the end of it, and that's, that's how much fabric you're going to need to make a fabric rose. So if I was making a width of um, 1.5, an inch and a half, I would take a, a strip of 15 inches long. You're going to need uh, three pieces of tulle or organza. Um, this one here is a three inch wide strip by 30 inches, which is this one right here. And I've already um, uh, put my running stitch through this to save time. But this is 30 inches by 3 inches. I took a, um, something just fell, I don't know what it was. I took a, um, a pin with double string, double thread, and I just did a whip stitch uh, in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way down there, and then I pulled it tight. So once you pull that tight, you're going to want to overlap that first one. Make sure that your um, uh, fabric is all in the same direction and it's not twisted. So once you know that it's all good in the right direction, you're going to want to overlap that um, other side by about an inch, not an inch, maybe like a half an inch, just so that when uh, it comes together, it overlaps each other. So let's just do that. And then you can just move it around and secure it. So then just um, go like that and do a couple stitches in there. and that will secure um, this round. Okay, so you've got that, which is um, the bottom of... Um, twist it a little bit on me. So bring that around. And you get the first one. Okay, so there's round number the bottom round, which is this big one here. The second one is, I think I did, um, well, I don't know what I did with it. The second round is, and this one is going to be a two inch circle. So we started with a three inch circle and then we want to have um, maybe two and a half. I think I did a, um, about I think I did, if this was three, this one was probably two and a quarter, something like that, because you just want it to be less than the outside, but uh, not too much more. So um, it's up to you, uh, basically. Okay, so then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to overlap it. Make sure I'm in the right direction. Overlap it and then pull tight. Make sure my thing's all in the same direction. Pull it. Make sure the overlap is working good. Okay. Come to the front. And do a couple stitches. Ok, 
Okay, so then let's open that up, spread it around, make sure it looks nice. Okay, now we're going to take this one and we're going to sew it through this one, right dead center, right in the middle. Okay, okay on this uh, uh, tool, you um, it doesn't really, uh, on this little small silver dot, it doesn't matter really if it's one side or the other. There is a right and a wrong, but you really can't tell because it looks the same on both sides. But... On this one, you can tell the difference. Um, this has uh, no shine, not too much shine on this side, but on this side, you'll get all of that. It's a black glitter, and you'll get that shine. So make sure that you're working in the same direction if um, your um, tool has a direction on it. So you put it right, side, right sides up, like that um, one tool that's got the um, sequins on it, the little silver disc. They, that's a definite uh, uh, right side, wrong side. Okay, so once you have that, you can um, go ahead and just put a couple stitches through here. You can leave your tail on, your um, uh, leave your pins on for now because then you can use that same thread to sew on your um, bar pin, and you don't have to rethread anything. And, um, so that'll be ready to use for uh, putting the actual um, uh, rows in the center of that. Okay, so you've got that ready to go, which is um, this one and this one. Okay, so now we're going to actually sew the rows. Let's just move that to the side. So we've got our 30 inch by 3 inches, and we've got a wide piece of tool that we don't want to use this whole thing because we want our tool just to um, stick out a little bit on our rows. So when we sew our rows together, we're actually sewing it in half. So that would make me only have an inch and a half width on this rose petal. There's only an inch and a half width on this rose petal. So I want to have my tool stick out just a little bit, so I probably want two inch, a two inch wide piece of tool. So I can always trim it down if I don't like the width, but I can't add once I sew the rows together. So um, what you do is you take your, uh, I'm going to use 28 inches, or 29 inches I think I uh, cut this. Yeah, it was uh, maybe 28 inches, and then you're going to uh, uh, just um, keep folding it so you can make an easy cut on it. I mean, you can get your um, uh, mat and your rotary cutter out and, you know, make these perfect, but um, you really don't have to be that particular. Okay, so just keep folding it and folding it and folding it. And then um, even it out. Okay, so it's close enough. So now I said I wanted to have mine stick out an inch and a half. So measure an uh, inch. Get a ruler. Measure your inch and a half, and then just make a, a cut. Okay, I didn't cut straight. Okay. So that's going to be our piece that we're going to sew into our row. Okay, so the rest of this I can just put in here. Okay, so now we're ready to get to the sewing machine. When you're doing the rows, um, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to make my, uh, turn the uh, fabric, uh, I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric, and I'm going to make a little cut angle downward so that when um, I sew it on the sewing machine, it's going to be in the shape of a half a diamond. Okay, so let's go to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew, um, what am I on? I'm on pink thread, it doesn't matter, pink or black, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to take my um, uh, fabric and I'm going to put my um, diamond uh, fold in there. And I'm going to use a regular stitch till I get about halfway across to the uh, end of this. I'm going to set my machine over to the uh, right side uh, about um, maybe uh, uh, between an a, a eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. And so you want to backspace to set your stitches. 
Okay, we haven't added the tool yet, so we're not there yet. So go ahead and go forward. Tell you about halfway to the end of that piece. Okay, now you want to switch to a gathering stitch. So I'm going to switch to my biggest stitch, which is uh, five on my machine. So I'm just going to do a couple more stitches, and I think I have enough now for my center. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my tool and I'm going to insert it underneath the fabric. Um, what you can do is you can take a, a couple pins and just pin it in place and then remove the pins as you uh, work it. Okay, so just put it in place. Just pin it down. Okay, so keep sewing. And then when you get just shy of that um, uh, end, lift up your pressure foot, pull your fabric around, so now as I'm sewing this rose uh, even with the other side, I'm also catching that tool up underneath. So I'm sewing the fabric and the uh, fabric sides together and tool up underneath. What I found out on this um, uh, fabric roses, when you're dealing with um, the uh, organza, uh, you c it's too hard to um, pull your strings with your thread on your sewing machine. So what I've had to do on this one is I had to, I just sewed it and then I had to do my own running stitch on it so that I could um, uh, gather that with uh, I used um, uh, some quilting thread and uh, doubled it up and then I just did a running stitch just like I did with the tool to uh, be able to gather it because um, I broke the string and I almost had I had to start all over on that so if you're finding out that when you go to pull this thread from your machine and you can't do it then you're going to have to um, uh, do a running stitch and use heavy duty thread. But so far I haven't had that problem with the tool. It's only been with the um, uh, it's only been with the organza. this up. If you make little um, folds in your fabric, don't worry about it. It'll just make your rows look more realistic. So go ahead and uh, just wrap your fabric around. You can uh, keep your tool going straight, but you're going to um, take your uh, and sew off. Okay. Turn out of the I just 
ran out of, um, that was perfect. I just ran out of bobbin thread. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off our um, two tails. And hopefully I can gather those um, as is. If not, I'll um, shut down and do a running stitch on here and then come back so you don't have to watch me do that whole thing. So let's uh, trim that down. We don't want that. So cut that all off. Okay, so we've got um, fabric with a uh, tool sewn in there. And it's going to twist just like the small ones do. The big ones are easier to um, work with. So pick one of your strings, it doesn't matter which one, and pull. And hopefully we can make a gather. Okay, it's working. Okay, but um, you want to be gentle on this one and go slow. So you don't, um, because you've got that extra tool in there, you really do not want to, um, uh, if you break your string, you're going to have to start all over. So, um, easy does it. And if you hit a snag, um, you're better off um, uh, taking the gathers out, I mean, um, loosening up your gathers and running that uh, gathering stitch yourself with a, a manual gather. Um, because uh, once it breaks, your string breaks, uh, you've got to start all over. Okay, this is going to take me a good 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and um, shut the camera down. And when I come back, we'll um, assemble the um, assemble the rows. Basically, I'm just going to keep gathering until I get all the way to my um, beginning center. And it's just um, we're just going to start circling this and uh, sewing it together, and that's going to be our um, rows. But I'm just going to go ahead and um, finish gathering this. And do you see how um, do you see how um, far up that um, tool is? Uh, uh, we can go ahead and trim that down when we get the rows done. Okay, let me finish gathering it and then I'll turn the uh, camera back on. Okay, I'll be back.